Hi, Kara here. Warm welcome to my craft room. Now, yes, my tutorial is long, but it was hard to cut back my voiceover because of the techniques here. Now, I find it difficult to wrap my head around uh, masculine cards at times, and I have to be inspired by something I visually see to get a handle on it. And I thought I would share some masculine tips with you and techniques that help me. And here this card was given to my husband by my son for Father's Day. And I couldn't believe that it was an actual store-bought card. Now, for $8, wow, yes, $8 for this card. You know how I know it's on the back. <laughs> so here... I thought, all right, like most masculine cards, you have animals, outdoors, trees, the water, you know, uh, all of the darker tone colors, except for the sky there. And I was truly inspired to share some techniques that help me walk my way through a masculine card. I don't know if there's any easy way of doing a voiceover this long. <laughs> So I'm just going to be relaxed with my chocolate milk here and I'm going to explain everything as best I can. How's that? Memory box ombre paper, Tuesday morning. Stays on brown ink because I'm using the Earth Tone 80 pound paper. Derwent ink tense pencils. I thought I would use as many coloring technique supplies as I could fit in here. By the way, the ombre paper is 99 cents a pack for 12 by 12. My Stampin' Up! foam pad and my uh, guillotine cutter I'm going to use there. Any cutter will do. It was, uh, you know, it was small enough on my island so everything didn't get in my way. And now we're going to open up the ombre paper. And did I mention the Stampin' mention the Stampin' Up! set? is from 2002 called Yukon. I love the animals. They're realistic and fun to stamp. I wanted to mention the measurements. The card that inspired me to do this masculine card was five and a half by eight and a half and my card is five and a half by six and a quarter. Now in the original card to my left it's folded like this. which is entirely different right that a card that we make generally yes you might have another card on the inside or fold it over once but this really was um, challenging for me to create and it's challenging enough for me to think up of masculine cards because I'm always drawn to feminine cards but I love the outdoors right and look at the look at this I'm going to I'm going to probably be jumping all over the place, so please bear with me. And I'm just covering up the note that he wrote to his dad. Here you see the fold. That's a big sheet of paper, isn't it? And um, love, love, love this set. I think I haul it up here for you to see, but I couldn't see it. <laughs> Yukon 2002. I have kept a lot of my Stampin' Up! Days stamps because they are very nice. This especially for outdoors. To have the bear and the moose. Like I said, I wanted to use a lot of materials. So first I'm going to cut this off and I use my T square. Didn't even put the T up to it. <laughs> yeah, there you go, Carol. What was funny is the clicker wasn't working, so I had to do it and do it the right way. So I'm gonna cut this off. But can I share this with you, my friends? I messed this card up, the blue paper. I messed it up totally because I flipped it and did all my stamping upside down so I had to begin again. Anyway, good experience, right? So let's make a gusset. Why do we make a gusset? Because of the thickness of the card base. So start right in the center and go uh, the next line and the next line on your Martha Stewart um, whatever board that is. So you're just going... <laughs> I'm just at the beginning of this card and I'm messing up. That'll come to me. Take your bone folder and make the three lines for the gusset. And that's just like a little book, right? And there we go. And it doesn't matter anything I do from here on in with this blue cardstock because can you believe it? I flipped it up. I don't know where it happened, but it happened. And there's nothing you can do about it. No use getting upset. 
just carry on and that's what I did so now we'll just take this it's five and a half by six and a quarter I'll erase with my nice click white eraser love that eraser all the marks I made and then you want to take your bone folder and crease out those three lines and then it's easy peasy from here on in I know you're saying sure <laughs> Easy peasy for who, right? <laughs> but I took the lid off a mason jar and made a little moon there. Then I did put those ziggity things that are in that, but I didn't like it. So when I cut it, I just cut around smoothly on the circle. I mean, who needs a die, right? If you have a pencil, just go crazy. All I needed was three little branches, so I drew those out. And I thought, mm, I'm not sure what kind of branches I'm going to put there. So just stop. I used my grid on my cutting mat to give me a quarter inch all the way around even. And just there you go. Traced it out. And then what you need to do is draw the trunk. So I made mine a little chunky like I normally do with the, any type of birch or trees that I draw. I like the nice chubby look and I'm drawing a few little leaves on the top but nothing that looks like a leaf in general it's only the place the leaves I want to put on there so I need a little bit of substantial cardstock and then I start cutting and I love this Fiskars um, knife this cutting knife it has lasted me five years now without having to replace the blade it's wonderful so just take it around take your time I did speed this up but I did take my time go around that half moon then you want to I'm sorry the outside quarter inch then make a slit so that you can get your fist scars I like these scissors as well and get it in there to cut out the little leaves on the top which aren't leaves they're just little uh, oval things with a point on the end of them it's the best way I could describe it and then come down and then you have to make up your mind uh, about the limbs I chose to do three I think now um, you can't get any easier than that and you don't even need a die in most cases if you can uh, trace you know if you can draw something out and this being I'm going to put leaves on the tree right there I'm going to make them myself I knew I didn't have to do any fussy cutting in there which is fabulous there's some days you just don't want a fussy cut and when I was doing this card that was the day so um, there's a few little pieces here that I did fussy cut in and that's in the trunk you, if you look over at the other card where it says for you dad see the little wee pieces parts I think there's about four of them I do add that in because this uh, sh this cutting blade is so sharp you don't have to really worry about it you know uh, ripping as you're cutting so I add the few little things on there and just kind of like in the shape of a leaf I guess and um, wait till you see how uh, I don't know I guess how beautiful the trunk looks when you add the markers and the um, glossy accents it turned out nice that I didn't have um, dark chocolate colored cardstock I didn't have any of that chocolate chip by stamping up I used to have and here I wanted to show you I actually made this wooden stamp I took a stamp off another set I never use um, and I ripped it off and then I put the stamp scapes I do put on the top uh, the number of the sets that I used uh, later on and I put that on there and look at see how you see I did it upside down yeah it was right there I noticed oh dear I am supposed to have the fold part at the top and the open part at the bottom and it was reversed yeah and I almost ripped that so be very careful this is this uh, cardstock is has no firm firmness about it at all 
but it was the closest thing I had to brown, so I decided to use it. And look at that. I'm looking at it. What? <laughs> Whoa! It can't be! But it was. Oh well. Yes. So I took out and decided to go with the green. No. Yes, I did. But you know why? This was kind of uh, a different green than it looks right here. It was kind of like a turquoise green. And I like that idea for using the light side of the ombre. I'll show you in a minute. And see how it has that tall grass in the background? It's just yummy. So I knew the dark part would go on the back fully taped down so you wouldn't see that. Took my Teflon bone folder, which I love, but it's not a necessary tool. Um, I just like it because it doesn't leave that waxy look on some of the papers you use. It does leave that mark. It did for me anyway. And here you can see why I did need that gusset, right? Because of the thickness. And I generally make my cards thick, so making a gusset was second nature to me. The next thing I decided to do was to get a block for my Stampscape uh, stamps. The rubber stamp. Uh, one thing, I love Stampscape stamps and whether they have the foam backing or not really doesn't matter. This set was on sale and it really does save you money if you get it without the rubber on the back. So it's the best of both worlds, right? Then I take a pencil, if you saw just a little bit ago, uh, and I mark off where the stamp begins with the pencil on the opposite side. That would be where the tree is. And then when it ends, I come around with the pencil. So when I'm stamping, I can situate it, you know, pretty well. And then when you take the tree, you can just go crazy with it. You can just stamp the upper portion to get small trees like I did there on the right side. I didn't, I only went uh, a third of the way from the top down with the ink and stamped it. And then I can use it full on and get that nice uh, evergreen tree. So I'm going to stamp, uh, stamp my moose and my bear on the top. And because the bear is just a tad bit bigger, it does seem to take over the actual picture. So what I did to remedy that is I put animals right in three. I grouped them three, five odd numbers. So to take the focus off of the bigger image, which is like hovering over my poor little moose, I put another animal on the left hand corner, which I think you're going to love when you see it. Here I'm taking the art and graphic twin markers and I don't know whether I said this but the difference between these and the Tombows are the tip. These markers here have more of a silicone rubber end on it and the Tombows are more uh, fibrous, more fiber on them. Is fibrous a word? That sounded pretty good though, didn't it? <laughs> fibrous. Fibrous. Yes. Um, anywho, let's continue on. I have a long way to go here. And if you need to take a break and fill up your teacup or your coffee cup, go ahead and shut me down. Actually, you could watch this for days, right? A little bit at a time. It's later in the evening, so I find that my voice tuckers out and I get more quiet. So uh, I apologize for that, but um, we'll continue on. I took out my water brush, love the fine tip water brush, and I just went all the way across flicking it in every direction to make it look more freestyle and a little bit of grass. Now the fun part, the ink tense pencils. These are awesome, aren't they? So what I did is I chose a dark, mid-tone, and light tone. I'm making the knots in the trees and I just go across it. Some I'm making marks that are heavy, some are light, and I try to mix up the tones. And when you see this here, isn't this scrumptious? Oh, I don't know if it's because it's on a lighter weight brown cardstock like this. Um, I don't even know 
where this cardstock came from actually. It could be Desert Storm um, cardstock, that kind of rings a bell, but anyway, it is really making a nice effect on here. And watch the way it moves around the holes that we cut out, like leaves, and it dries really quickly. So you can go back. That's the beauty of ink tense pencils, my friends. You can go back when it's wet and regenerate the ink in the pencil, and it's beauteous. So I just wipe off the end, and it's almost dry as I speak. <laughs> and now I take the fine tip uh, on the glossy accents. I'm going over the branches. I'm not worried so much because I am going to glue the front of this right to the paper cardstock. It's not going to float open like the other card. I took the lid off this, as you can see, so it would come out in uh, abundance. <laughs> then I'm going to set it aside and I'm going to stamp my images here. You notice that I did stamp a few and needed to grab, yes, my spongy there because it does give you a perfect image almost all the time. You, you, you know, if you're putting it down consistently. I used my Memento Tuxedo Black ink for the coloring and as you can see on top of the papers, my flocking powder. On the left side is my colored flocking powder, plain. And then I have one with glitter on the right side in that uh, organizer. Okay, so let's get ready to put some flocking on the grass here. I chose three or four colors. I'm not sure here. I think it's three different shades. Now, and then you just want to take tweezers and you want to puff that powder up because it gets firm over time and you want it to look puffy, so to speak, right? So you want to really uh, work it in there in the container and then puff it out. Put the glossy accents down first. I took a little bit of a powder puff and took it off of my glossy accent trunk. And now we're going to prepare for um, the scene. At the beginning when I put the stamp on the block, I forgot to show you. And I wanted to show you how easy it is to take one stamp off and replace it with another. So I don't, I've never used this stamp out of the Stampin' Up um, little kit there, Christmas set. So I took off the, I peeled that part off, you know, that shows you the image. And then the other side that I peeled off, the actual foam stamp, I just put it on the back of it and I'm going to store it. I could even use it like that so simple. So here we go. This is some of the collection I have of Stampscapes. We're going to use the 3B Nature Sheet number three and it has so many gorgeous outdoor stamps. You can't even begin to say how beautiful they are. Here's our tree. Check the bark out. Isn't it ah, beautiful? And the flocking beyond words of course. Just love it. So let's put that away for now until later. I always get asked about my transitions, all the cute little funny things I put in between my tutorials. Well, I purchased each one of them and I made this purchase just so you could see the sleek, waxy tones that you see on the fur of a moose. Pictures don't do it justice. When you see this beautiful creature as I have in real life, the beautiful sleek, it's almost like an oily wax on them. And as we go to color, I hope that I'm able to uh, make this a realistic little stamp of a mousse for you. So I start out with my E89. This is a really dark brown. And I'm going to take it on the spots that the artist made the lines. And those lines are made for dark tones like dark shades if you want to put them in there and then on the rack generally the rack is a light light cream color almost to a white and it has this beautiful beautiful fur like our flock I am going to put flocking in this huge big antlers he's carrying and um, and then I'm going to show you how you will get that uh, nice oily look 
from Copics and Prisma pencils, the most beautiful combinations uh, together. So I want to put my light shades and my medium shades together and I'm picturing it as though the sun was coming straight down on this animal. Not to one side nor the other because he's in the water, he's just eating and the sun is coming down and shining on him. And so the underbelly will be dark and under his face that's called the bell that hangs down that's going to be dark just like the underbelly and as you saw in the pictures and you can back it up there's so many shades of browns and earth tones in this glorious moose um, that it makes it fun because you really can't make a mistake because all of these shades are intertwined together and it makes it for a fun coloring session because you have no stress. You just take all of those colors and mix them. Now I use a Bostitch pencil sharpener. It is uh, an auto stop start so it will stop when you have a beautiful point on there and I put the numbers of it up above so that if you're interest in it, interested in it you can uh, order one and I'm putting my Prisma pencils always to the right hand side in my glass bowl and my ink tents are always in the blue bowl yes color coordinated <laughs> you know for those fast times you gotta grab a grab something so if you see my hand go up I'm just testing the color so let's go with a Prisma with a darker shade of it's kinda like a brown gray and I am really sorry, I just did not have the time to put all these colors together. But I thought if I put a close-up of this, it would help you to see what colors I'm using. Because moose come in every color and flavor there is. Wow, it's just amazing to see them. And then that little hot spot in the center there, I always like to put one area where it looks like it's been kissed by the sun and that's where I chose to do it on this image. Editing down from nine hours of film and I'm trying to put in just the things that I think would be helpful in a technique when doing this type of a card and I hope you enjoy it because I enjoyed it thoroughly making it for you and um, let me just uh, walk it step by step. I like to have my pencil super super duper sharp and that pencil sharpener will do it for you. It collects quite a bit of the shavings and I love to use those. Don't throw out your shavings. Get a glass mason jar and save them when they go in because I will be doing a shavings technique tutorial where you can actually paint with the shavings out of your um, pencil sharpener. So please, when, when you go to sharpen next, keep everything keep everything uh, that you collect in there and I'll show you how to sift it out and make beautiful beautiful coloring tutorials so here we go uh, I'm going to start the wax you know when I color if you wa watch my coloring tutorials I really do love to put a base it may be five six seven colors undertones and then whichever I like the most I'll go back with that same color and I'll extend it and I'll and I'll put it on top of the other color uh, it doesn't matter if I have to do it five or six times I will do it so the look I'm trying to get now is that that look of being wet and the Sun coming down and you know it having some um, curvatures in its muscle very muscly these uh, wonderful creations these moose Another technique if you're trying to get a waxy wet look is to take that file that comes with, the, you can get them as a set, uh, sometimes with pencils, it's just a wide file right here and there's about a hundred little files in there stuck together and you just shave it off right on top of your image there. Uh, well, not on top, kind of on the bottom. See all the little shavings there? If you sprayed that with your uh, spritzer, all of the colors that you used on that animal 
would filter out and fill up that space, you wouldn't even believe it, it, how beautiful it looks. It's a totally different, more of a mixed media style. So when I want to get that look of um, a smooth, waxy fur, I sand down the pencil so there's no point. It's perfectly flat, hold it straight at me, and I go around in circles, and that gives me a total round end of color and uh, wax all together. I'm going in circular motion so you don't leave any lines, and that's what I used on the E89 uh, Copic coloring that you see, all the dark images. I filed down the top, and then I did circular to get that wax looking uh, like it was muscle nice round bits of muscle throughout our little mousse. Now I want to take our little razor pen here and I want to take every little bit of that white cardstock and remember this is a 120 pound white cardstock I get from the stationery store. It's very thick. It's almost like a 140 pound weight in any other brand. So I uh, use this sharp sharp uh, tool. Then I go around it with my 100 black Copic all the way around the edges and actually I, I'm sorry this is I don't think I think it's a dark brown I might have went along with my E89 because uh, I don't know I can't see it because I'm moving very fast. So I want to show you another technique if you're looking to get a nice waxy look another way to get that is to put your Copic marker over top of the Prisma Pencil Wax and then take another color just to step up and color over it right away. So there's some of the colors I used um, in this mousse so far and uh, now I'm going to take a Prisma Pencil and I'm going to go over right over top of the black um, marks that I made with my Copic marker. This gives you the best again of two worlds. And now, why am I putting on, um, oh, wait a second, my soft spots that I wanted to have? I'm going to go back and make sure that they're inside there because you know, when the sun comes down, it does kiss different areas and make them brighter because of the muscle, you know, being, you know, having the curves. So I take a pin here and I think, oh no, that's okay, like it's flowing. So I took the lid off and this is what I do when I put an animal in water. I take um, a reasonably uh, thick style of a pin, a long pin, and I go over the underbelly of the animal. I'll go up along the muscle that I think is standing out. I'll put it on the inside of the fold. I'm just pouring some on there so that it looks like this mousse when it went down for some water and came back up it had splashes of water on the muscle that's sticking out and um, that's my theory especially if you're putting it in water right because I'm going to use my um, compressor and I'm going to color with my Copic uh, markers so the water is going to uh, I want him to look really um, you know wet like he's just uh, feeding and you saw in that picture he gets his head right down in there and I have his little red tongue see it there <laughs> I like my animals to come alive I really do I study them uh, and I know it's just a card and call me crazy but I love to uh, get as much realism in a realism stamp or in a cartoon stamp you can bring a cartoon stamp to realism as well you know either or tomato tomato but anywho I put it up against the white just so you could see all the folds in its skin I took my um, oh it's not glossy accents but uh, it makes the black eyes there enamel uh, gla enamel, black enamel. Am I getting close? Anybody yell at me? Tell me what that is. Um, enamel accents, I think. Okay, so here, if this was my card, I just put him in the water just so you could see what he looked like, what he would look like, and look it. I love it. Yeah, so I'm happy. That's where it's going to go, 
And now I'm starting the process. Can you believe it? Uh, yeah, I just shook him off there. Go dry off. <laughs> so I have him on the uh, caramel colored cardstock. And now I need to build up my focal point, which is going to be my Martha Stewart little rabbit punch. I punched out three of them. Cute as cute can be. We're going to get our flocking powder out. And with that flocking there, oh my, I just fell in love. We'll set that aside and put our 3D little bunny to work. Take your Nouveau, may I tell you, this is fantastic. I can get the tiniest dot of glue in the minutest part of anything with that glue tip. I highly recommend it. And then you get your tweezers and you're going to put one on top of the other here so that they match and number three on top of that, and then comes the flocking. And guess what we use for that? Glossy accents. Why? Because you can't see through it. Even if you missed something, it would look fine. You're gonna puff up your flocking with your um, tweezers like this. See how important it is to do that? Then we're gonna put it on little bunny ears, of course, and very little of this comes off, believe it or not. You just use the square, oh, may I say the square tweezers at the end, not pointy tweezers. Square tw tweezers, you can get uh, quite a bit of flocking in the right spots. Pointy, it just falls off. So here I want to drop some in between the ears because it is three deep, deep, and I want to have gray shading along the pink, just a little bit, and you can see it. Uh, you may not be able to on camera, but I could see that. And then we're going to put the rest of it with uh, glossy accents to begin how we are going to color this little bunny because it is our focal point. I wanted it to be white and then on a lot, like two thirds of it white and then one third of it gray with right there. And I wanted it to have a curved line and this flocking, if you poof it up like that, oh, this will last you a lifetime, and then you can pass it on to a friend for their lifetime. It's that much flocking in one of these little jars. It's crazy. So go nuts. Put a lot of it on, and what you don't use, you don't have to worry about it because, like I said, lots in there. Now, I take the end of my square tweezer, and then I make the, the curvature of my little bunny and isn't it crazy details to me make a card all the little details and doesn't it look like the fur if you mix that white in certain little spots like going like that jiggity 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 it looks like um, real hair hair <coughs> eh, hair hair yeah okay I don't I don't hear a lot of people laughing here Anywho, yeah, let's move on. It's going on 11 o'clock p.m. and I'm still having fun. And I hope you are too. I hope you're enjoying this. Uh, it's just a fun, long video of mine. So let's move forward and make a great big, okay, put one glump on there. I want a bigger tail. So I'm going to put some Nouveau on there. And you can really use this glue to your advantage. Now it's time to take the enamel accents, the black, and this has such a shine to it. Look how small you can get that eye. And then I'll just take my sharpener here, um, and I'm going to take that little line that was there. I'm going to add some Nouveau glue to the nose, because you know they have the prettiest little pink nose. So I'm going to make that, and then I'm going to put, and it's over top of the flocking. May I jump in and say that? It just stays there. I can't explain it. And doesn't it look like real hair on the hair? <laughs> now I take one of my dollar store paint brushes. Now look at that. Is that inventive or what? I looked over to the side of my island, and there was my big bowl of dollar store paint brushes. And I saw whiskers. Forget the paintbrush bristles. I saw whiskers. <laughs> Once you get those situated so easy because that glue has that little sticky consistency that will hold that on. And does he look cute or what? And then you add the little bit of pink 
on there for the flocking on his nose and that will secure uh, those on there when it dries and then you want to put a great big fluffy gray tail on the end of him. Look at this. There he is. And the 3D. Oh, cutesy wootsy. And there's the brush I used. Now you're not going to miss anything off there if somebody grabbed that to paint a picture like me. No. Look at all the ones I have left over. The dollar store. Great big pack of them. You know my dollar store where nothing's a dollar. So here we go. Oh, this is the fun, fun, fun Prisma colors. Go around and make lines, just lines anywhere. Don't even, you know, just fill that spot in with lines with your Prisma pencils. Then you're going to take your Tombow markers here and you're going to go all the way around, just little lines. Don't fill the gaps. Just go line, 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 line. And wait until you move this. Grab another color of Tombow, a darker color, more lines. Leave spaces. Don't fill it all in. Make little round knots because it is wood. And when you add the glossy accents, it is liquid. Yeah, right? Just like water, it's going to move this all around. And don't put it all together. Leave gaps because wood has gaps. And this is going to overemphasize the fact. And when that dries, wow, you are going to love it. Then take the glossy accents, go down your spine, right down there with one line because you're going to need, you know, the card's opening, closing, opening, closing. So this will guard that and give it stability. You know, I always love thickness on my cards. We just added it and look at the grass blocking. I love it. Then while you have that, put some glossy accents in that great big antler and Fluff up your gray flocking and put it just in those round, deep curves. That will emphasize the curve in the antler. Wow, this is going to be fantastic. You have to think that way. You have to think your card is going to be great. And that way, you know, I don't know, I just get excited that it's going to be a good card when I'm finished. We shall see. We shall see. Now comes cloud time. There's good clouds and there's bad clouds. Can you believe that? This is a cartoon style cloud. That's a good card. They're all good. They're all good clouds. I don't know what I'm saying. I'm tired. But here we go. These kind of cutout cards for clouds are more in the cartoon line where you have the straight edges. If you want realism, you want to take your cardstock and tear. Tear it towards you. When you tear the paper towards you, believe it or not, the thin side will be on the top. If you tear it away from you, it will be on the bottom. See what I mean right there? So now we're going to do one on each side so that you have the best of both worlds. You can flip it. And this is a great... The other one, it's too smooth. The cut's too smooth. It doesn't look realistic. This is just right. You have here a torn edges. A torn edges. <laughs> I feel like I'm in Italy. No, you have torn edges. I'm from Canada. Get it right, Carol. So now put down your mousse on the bottom so we can start uh, configurating what we're going to do with this card. I'm going to put the too smooth cloud away with my other cloud that I like because I want realistic clouds when I hook up my, um, my Copic compressor. Now I'm going for a different look on the bear. I'm going to use my tri-tone pencils, you know, that have three different colors in one pencil. And right here I'm using my metallic pencil by, um, I think it's Derwent Metallic, and one is Noir. Um, Let's see, can I read that? Let me stop here. It's Derwent. So these are the Derwent uh, metallics, and they're gorgeous, just gorgeous. And they run by numbers, like the ones I used were 81 to 86. And I, I think I mentioned them later on. I'm not too sure, but I, you know me with doing an underlayer, so I decided to use this one use the metallics as my underlayer. Here I'm going quite light 
um, I'm taking all the places that show me that they should it should be dark because the artist is actually quite uh, it's illustrated quite well because the fur is broken up for you and you can just add your pencils like nice and pointy and then you can even um, make movement in the fur by changing up the lines there's so much possibility with uh, when you're doing animal fur all different sorts of animals you can experiment on how to um, make coarse hair soft hair uh, woolly hair waxy hair you know now here we go this is where I come in with the silver metallic and I'm going to break up with the point on this pencil each hair now because I'm going faster it's hard to see excuse me it's hard to see see what there I'm just going to show you I put it into my um, pencil sharpener each time I go over there uh, to the left and I'm making my spots if you can see in um, kind of a mustard color so that I know where I want to brighten it up and I have a little surprise on this little bear we're going to do later you, I think you're really gonna like it I'm going to pick up the speed now and finish it up so that it doesn't take too long to go through the coloring but as you can see here I will walk you through even though it's fast how I try to keep one side identical to the other I take the left or excuse me I take the right side I concentrate on that that way I can look over on the right side when I'm coloring so I can match it up you know if there's if he's leaning I know that I have to add you know either a dark tone or a light uh, it depends on which way he's facing and all that jazz so here I'm just adding all my colors I'm using tri pencils as you can see every time I turn that pencil it has three different colored leads every time I turn it I am getting a different color and it's fascinating to work with that and the metallics together I think you just love it because you learn how to see these are the colors I'm just showing you a few just as you turn it how many colors you get out of one pencil amazing to look at it and when you look at my bear I have all the undertones in metallic and I have all the fur separated with the tri pencils lighten and darken it's like you know the shag rugs right after you put the rake through it back in the day how it all stood up straight well that's what my bear looks like to me <laughs> an old shag rug raked what can I say and I'm gonna take my little stork beautiful these are so sharp these scissors you can't believe it I got it at Michael's and they're wonderful and can you believe I'm comparing my bear to a shag rug when it's been raked does that tell you my age or what <laughs> oh yeah and then I'm gonna take a dark Copic um, marker and I'm gonna go over all the edges so you don't see any of the white cardstock and here's a little peeky peeky at my uh, Koi Nor Tri Pencils. You'll love them. Three colors in one pencil. All you have to do is rotate it. And it's just gorgeous. And it does come with the blender pen that I'm using right here. I want to blend some of these colors at the bottom. And uh, gorgeous. Then we have to put the little eyeballs on with our um, black enamel accents. We have to put it on the snout and we have to use the white enamel accents for those real err claws down the bottom. Um, did you hear that? Err claws. <laughs> it's not even midnight and I'm acting crazy. So here we go. I put a little bit in the ears on that snout, but I have a surprise for you with this bear. Oh yeah, we are going to bring him to life in a little while. And the white enamel accents beauteous. Well it's morning and we are continuing on with this video and uh, it's more of a technique video and I wanted to show you this. If you want to bring out some black in your lines to pop up fur, take your um, 2B, 4B, 5B, any B uh, pencil and that has a really dark black lead. 
So if you can't find a black pencil of any sort in your collection, just grab a B style pencil. Yes! And we'll just carry on. Now see that little squirrel in the tree? My inspiration was the rabbit. I replaced that uh, squirrel in the tree for the rabbit. Now on to gelatos. These little lipstick wonders are just that wonderful. And you know, I don't know why I don't use them more often because they are a beautiful coloring medium. And I was over on Stamp Nation, if you haven't uh, checked that out. It is a monthly subscription site where you get inspired. All crafters meet together in one spot and inspire one another. So you can go over on Catherine Pooler's site and check that out if you're interested. And I was watching, uh, they have free classes for members. And Faber-Castell uh, is doing a class on gelatos. So, of course... When I was making this card, I was reminded, I have gelatos. <laughs> so let's get them out. You just have to, for leaves, it's wonderful because you just put green tones, orange and yellow, all the wonderful fall colors down. And then you can add more color even when they're wet. And then you have to dry it. Take in mind that this is not watercolor paper. It's my 120 pound white card stock that I use all the time and once it's fairly dry here I'm going to add some green acrylic paint. This just gives me uh, a little bit of richness on top and yet I'll still see the underlay colors with the gelato and it gives me the thickness I want for my uh, leaves and adds a little bit of interest I think and then I'm going to draw dry it and we're going to move on to put the veins in the leaves. An easy way of adding veins to any project is with a stamp. Any style crackle stamp works beautiful. And I have this Clarity small little stamp. I bet you it's just maybe two by three inches. I took out my Stampin' Up! ink. And the colors are Mossy Meadow and Always Artichoke can't see artichoke on there but that's what it is a light and a dark of any uh, ink color would be fantastic I didn't want to go black I wanted to keep my tones all the same all my colors you know in the green color family so I just darkened this up went crazy stamped it all over using the plastic that the stamp came in as a block and now I'll cut these in half so I can run it through the vagabond but first, I'm going to put clear embossing powder over the crackle. Once we get all of that clear embossing powder on there, take your heat tool, go over it, and look at how beautiful that crackle bounces off the gelato and the acrylic paint. And you could see that I did wait a little bit before I got it stamped, and then I waited a little while again, and it still picked up the... Um, the ink which was wonderful now see that leaf stamp I don't know I've had that for five years I don't know what set it came off of um, I think it was a spellbinder leaf set if I can find it I will post it and this is CC Designs Olive Branch ATSO55 is the ordering number if you're interested in that little number it I tell you at Christmas time I use it all the time for putting leaves on my cards and you'll see why as soon as I get it out. And I strategically placed these two stamps that's or dies, that's all I used, and look at that. Isn't it wonderful? It's just like a I don't know, like an evergreen mixed in with an elm. <laughs> and then they had a baby and it was this um, die right here. I just love it. And CC Designs, very inexpensive, affordable for uh, little dies, big dies, whatever. And look at that. And I don't waste anything. I took this Stampin' Up! Bird Punch out. It had that long leaf in there. And I went around all the edges to get as much paper as possible and as many leaves as I could punch out. I'm going to just place them around to see 
how many I'm going to need if I need to punch any more or die cut any more images out and I don't so I will save that other half and put it away for what the next time I need to uh, use leaves and we're going to grab another teensy little Marby punch that uh, I think everybody has in their stash don't we <laughs> yeah every time they were on sale at Michael's I would always grab one of them and uh, this is just a tiny leaf which is perfect now to get some three-dimensional look I grab my scoreboard and I just arrange the leaves on the lines the embedded lines in the way you know I want the veins to go so I have really doubled up on veins right <laughs> and you know I'm gonna show you here I stayed up and down when I used the scoreboard I take the stylus with the smallest ball end and that's what I put in and look at that and then you can use your stylus on the large ball end to put on your foam mat to form these leaves so that they're more circular and not flat. Um, that's for another tutorial. But you can get a stylus in the Wilton Cake um, package, you know, that they have a, you can order that. It has all kinds of stylus and that's for using on fondant cakes. And I have a set of that. It's inexpensive. It's in the cake section and they have from small stylus balls to large ones and for for molding leaves like this and flowers that Wilton set has come in handy uh, I really love it or you can just order the stainless steel ones I have that one it works well for small items or just the one I have there by Martha Stewart and uh, it works for all occasions now here's the Spartex TC51N it's my air compressor presser, sorry, my air compressor for my Copics. And what I like about this compressor right now at Ellen Hudson, it has a major sale going on. And I think there's only one of these left in the uh, large model, but I think it's $80 uh, off. Uh, every one of the ones I show you are on sale with a huge discount if you want to run over and check it out. I made sure I went over to see because I got mine two years ago or maybe a year ago I can't remember but it was on sale then and it's on sale even more savings today so um, this is I thought I would just check and show you uh, because I needed to do the backs and I didn't want to do each of them just Copic with my Copic marker uh, drawing it on so I grabbed my compressor turned it on takes a second to get going and you don't have to use the air cans because they can run into money. So the price of this over on Ellen Hudson uh, will save you in the long run instead of buying the cans. And the sale is wonderful. But I saw they only had one compressor left. Eeks. Yeah. I almost want to get it just to have a spare. <laughs> you know me with buying in twos, but that's a bit much, isn't it? Talk about twos. Oh, yeah. Here's the instructions to the compressor. I had it inside my little Harley bag with the second unit. But see the D61 on top? That is a new one. And the one next to it is the middle version, the one that you use if you don't want to have the expense of a large compressor and you wouldn't use it that often. There's one or the other. Now the gun fits right on the can of the D60 and off you go you're off and running but if you want to have uh, more air this is a D180 to the right and that cord goes on top of the can the D not that one that goes right into the can like I'm showing you there this wire goes into the 180 then goes uh, hooked up um, on to the second one that's what I'm showing you there's one two the small ones around $33 and I think it's $83 for this one with the wire. And then you move on to around $265 for the compressor, which is on sale for that price. Generally, they run about $350, so that's a good deal. 
All right, off to making clouds once I explain that. I wanted you to see that there are alternatives to an air compressor. Here we go. We took the just right hand torn piece of 120 pound cardstock and we're going to go over it with a light color. And you can see I'm kind of matchy matchy with the paper. I want to do it in the turquoise because the water's going to be more of a in the blues. So just direct it to wherever you want. Start with a light color, go to a mid-tone, then you can darken it up. It really is preference when you're making clouds. You can even take it away, add some features, and go back on the white with a white pencil. And I'll show you that later. Want to just move your Copic um, marker up, you know, follow the lines of the ripped out piece of paper and then I'm going to cover a bit here because I'm going to start to uh, airbrush the bottom where the water is. I want to get a sense of what colors I want to use so I'll start out with my uh, lightest tone, my lightest color here that I chose and I'll go around just to see the difference between the cloud colors and this and it worked out well for me. And remember we stamped these little uh, round puddles kind of with the water going out. And once in a while put your image in the water if that's where it's going to take a look and see where you need to add. Like I needed some dark there. And this is not the finalized uh, coloring. This is just to give me a base so I know what I'm going to uh, work with, what colors I'm going to work with. I just go round and round and round where the water, you know, in the puddle where the leaf is in the water, where the leaves are, and that makes that rippling effect. Just take your Copic um, airbrush with your marker and go around and around in a circle, and then you can take two other colors, your light and your medium, and fix it up here. I'm just putting color in because I'm going to add images over top so I don't want to see white cardstock so choose any color and color it in here and then you kind of get a sense of what you want to use. I do dark around the edges because you are going to see that and I place it down and I think to myself okay I like those blues so I'll stick with those right there. Those are the shades that I use. I think there's nine different blue colors and now I get close up and I am going to um, situate all the colors, the ripples. I want it to look like those leaves have a little bit of weight on them. So I will make the lines thicker. The more weight you have sitting on water, like if it was a boat, the darker the color going around would be. A leaf, it would be a lighter tone because it doesn't weigh that much and you're not going to get a lot of ripple effect. Uh, if that makes any sense. And then let's do some trees. I'll go in with my Copic marker alone just to mark out where I'm going to spray. Any precise images, I will just go over it with the tip of the Copic marker here. And I didn't even think of this, but the two trees on the left, you're not even going to see much of it because of the other tree coming onto this, right? But I didn't even think of that, so I just made like I was doing the entire image. Don't be afraid to put dark lines because you are going to spray the closer you get with the air gun, um, with your marker, the more vivid you're going to get the image. Be reminded that the moose, the bear, and the rabbit are my focal points. I did not want the background to scream out, so that's going to be more like a, a flat coloring in the sense it's just free form. It's just color all over, yet distinct. You can pick out trees, you know what the clouds are, you know the mountains in the background. And I do end up making them look like mountains. If I said that I took out the little mountain, I did in a sense, I went all the way across with that mountain instead of staying just behind the bear's head because it had that little mountain there. And I'm going crazy with all kinds of uh, greens. I took out the lines there on the left on the bottom by the water and now I'm going in. I want it to look like rocks. Uh, I wanted rocks. I wanted shrubbery. I wanted trees. I wanted 
all kinds of tones, of colors in there just uh, to make it look rich. I wanted that rich, rich look of colors in the background, but yet my animals stick out. Look at that. And then I'll go back and spray. There's no problem with going back with your air gun. Isn't that wonderful? Quick. And I do the clouds again. And then I'm going to take some pencils here. This is the white Der Derwent pencil. And I'm going to brighten up those clouds. And so that way you don't have to worry if you, you know, you got too quick with the air gun. Then I go over the peaks of the mountain so it looks like a little bit of snow. But like I said, I don't want the background to be the focal point. I want that tree with my um, leaves and I don't want to cover up my cloud so this formation is going to change. I put a little bit of leaves on the ripple in the water. I make sure that I have three different tones in the uh, shadow of the trees in the water, you know, where um, the light comes down and the trees are right in the center there. I'm very pleased with this masculine card, the thing I struggle with so much. And because I have, I couldn't do this all in one sitting uh, due to the fact I have company, so I was doing it a little bit at a time, and it ended up nine hours. <laughs> but that's why my video is long. I hope you don't mind. You can always scan through it fast. That's the beauty, eh? And here, this set from Dynamics, my favorite things, came as a gift if you bought more than $60 worth of product. And I haven't used this much either, but what I like about it, it has so many alphabet letters. You could honestly cut it out just to put a sentiment, you know, in it. And I'm showing you that little wee um, uh, squirrel because I replaced the squirrel with the bunny and now the leaves I replaced the die cut leaves with actual leaves I replaced the animals with two different ones a bear and a moose and then the water stays the same the land on that uh, that section on the left that kind of oval that round thing the price is on the back with who made it Carlton cards $7.99 and I thought you know what I'm going to personalize the back of my cards because I ordered a stamp or two that had personalized things on it. I'm going to use I turned on my uh, heat gun to use that. It works on battery or plugs. I wanted to just show you that. I get it at Walmart. There's the stamp that I was inspired to put my name. You can use Handmade By, Your Friendship is Important to Me, the Handcrafted with the Flowers, or I have the letter C that has my blog, www.stampinribbons.blogspot.com, written on the bottom. I had to put that plug in there, right? <laughs> Another thing I haven't used in a long time is the Stampin'Majig. So I wanted to show you, you can use anything that has an L shape on it. Now I have the Stampin'Majig on the right, you can see it down there, the turquoise one. I have this Stampin'Majig with the square acrylic um, mat. I have the, the T ruler, you can use that as long as you have the acrylic squared to stamp on, or this. This makes perfect alignment if you're doing uh, different card stacks. You know, you have five and you want them perfectly placed. That tool right there does that. I'm showing you. You place one, two, three, four, five, and you get perfectly placed um, backgrounds, background cards. So here we go. Stamp it onto your acrylic square first, then move the L out of the way, put it where you want it to go, Put that back on, remove the square, stamp it on there, and look at that. I couldn't believe it. I only had one mark, and I'm using these extra juicy stamps from Catherine Pooler. Amazing. They are so crazy juicy. That black one is fabulous. And um, because it was so juicy, I was kind of worried about how many times I tapped it. Grab whatever anti-static powder you have. I used baby powder the second time just to show you. You can put it inside a shaker and pounce it on there. Smells fabulous. 
and then you can do the second stamp. So I stamped it onto this acrylic block right here, um, and then I placed it exactly where I wanted it, put back the Stampin'Majig L acrylic thing, and I always call them my the thingies. And now I put clear embossing powder on both of them. I heat set it, just wipe it down, the powder will come off, and it will smell yummy. I put a leaf over top of my little dot that got onto my cardstock. And now we're going to put double sided tape and start putting this masculine card together. And if you stuck with me all this time, thank you. Wow, you're brave. <laughs> yes, you must have had about five cups of tea or coffee by now. I always tell you how much I appreciate my viewers, I really do. And I love the fact that you can stop anytime and come back a hundred times to get to the end. <laughs> so I put double-sided tape on the back of that, added it to the brown paper. Now you can see why I needed that little bit of gusset. I take my 16th inch double-sided tape and I go around the edge here because I want to secure this to the actual folded quarter page and just putting it together. I was just thrilled that it uh, had the look I was going for. That's so important to us card makers, isn't it? To get all the way to the end and then look at it and then you think, oh no, I wish I had done this or that. No, I was totally satisfied. And here I just put a little bit of glue, hot glue on the body, but on the bottom, I put double-sided tape because I wanted the feet to go way in and I wanted the body to stick out. I put a leaf underneath the tongue part so it looked like he was licking the leaf and I had glue as you can see on the back. So I'm just removing the little pieces so you can't see it. That's where I'll go around and make any adjustments I need to do. As the coloring, I wanted to take my art and graphic pens that I have here, the twin markers, and go around and add some uh, shadow, deep in the shadows where, you know, like in those trees there, I wanted shadow on the leaves in the water, I wanted shadows on the actual larger trees that are sticking up, I wanted to add more little twigs around the edges of the water, and I wanted to take a light marker and a dark marker and go over that little leaf there. It's all the little detailed things that at the end of my cards, I sit back and I look to see, is there anything else I can add to it before I do the finishing touches? Then I go ahead and do it. It's wonderful. Bear down, I use the Nouveau glue. I love this stuff. I love it so much, I ordered two more this morning. The Tim Holtz new oxide ink colors are out, so I ordered those, they're pre-order, from a company here in Canada. I'm going to leave a link to them. And I ordered two more of these Nouveau. Remember I said, remember I, said I was going to try it out. Love this glue. Love it, love it, love it. It comes out in teeny, teeny uh, amounts or large amounts, and it holds like crazy. So that bear is secure just with the glue. I'm taking the backing off the double-sided tape so I can situate that. And then it's time to place the leaves, my friends. And wow, I know this was uh, exceptionally long, but my tutorials are getting longer, aren't they? With technique videos, I think it's necessary to keep all of those little bits in there because, like I said, we go back to videos to uh, watch again and again. We don't have to watch this all at one sitting, right? And then I'll show you how I covered up the inside where the Copic marker went through the one side of the paper. I had a really good idea for that. Now that little bunny, oh, he's so cute. You know where I had to situate that? I had to do it on top because I wanted you to see all that fluffy flocking that we made like the grass it matched the little leaf off to the right and it's going to match the leaves on the top so I put some hot glue only on the bottom portion so that way when you look sideways he does look three-dimensional I want to cover under the bear so uh, I'll do that after 
wanted to take advantage of both sides of these leaves to use the crackle and the side that I airbrushed. And look at this. All you have to do is put a tiny squirt of this Nouveau glue. It's just, it equals out just like the mixed media matte one by Ranger. I really like both of them. And here I put the leaf right in between the three layers we made the bunny with. So it looked like he was gnawing on the leaf portion. And look up in the tree. Do you see the trunk where we didn't put glossy accents? How it really makes that trunk look three dimensional by seeing the lighter tone. Um, you know stick out and the glossy accents and the knots in the trees yes I love that and now I take my pokey tool to curl it up so I can actually see the uh, crackle portion of the leaves on the other side and then I'll put another one down so that I reverse it and I get the best of both worlds again now I put the Nouveau glue down to put my tiny little Marvy punched um, leaves on there. I'll do one one side and one the other. So just like I did with the big leaves here and it's all coming together. A nice masculine card that you can send out. You can use it for anything but I'll show you what I did with the sentiment on the inside. I think you'll really like the idea. It's different than stamping a sentiment down and I don't want to um, cover that uh, leaf but, or the clouds, so I have to kind of be innovative here. So I curl up the leaves before I stick it in that hole. Don't want to cover the clouds, and I don't want to cover that part that we left open on the tree, what I was just talking about. So I shift it over, I curl it way up, and then I use hot glue just on the middle leaf there. Like, no, I switch it up. I knew it was, no, right at the top leaf. That is all that's holding that on. That's all you need. And look at that. You can see the clouds, the branches. You can see both uh, techniques with the leaves, one with the Copic airbrushing, one with the Clarity Crackle Stamp, and the gelato and acrylic paint. Now here's what I did that I just love the idea. I'm so glad it came to me. I took my scissors and I cut up that one paw all the way up his arm and I cut it out then I put Copic uh, dark gray marker underneath and I slid this branch right underneath the cut portion so it looked like his paw was sticking out that's all it took and it was already glued down you just need to just uh, gently cut then I did the outline with my uh, black Copic, you know, so you couldn't see any white cardstock. And look at that. Slid that underneath the paw portion so it looks like his grrr claws. <laughs> and now I took my knife and I'm going to cut the paw on the other side, on the left paw. Cut it right out. Slide my knife underneath so that I grab only the first layer of my 120 pound cardstock. There you go, popped right up. Then I'm going to take my black Copic color underneath so nothing white is showing but, the, uh, but his claws. And then I'm going to slide a leaf under there, but you know what's fabulous? I take my pokey tool, I grab some hot glue off my glue gun, and I slide that up to give it the bulk, the 3D look right like this. Then I take the leaf and I slide that up and look at that. I have three dimensional paws with the beautiful leaves underneath. And I'm just getting the gooey guts off there. And now you have three dimensional paws that easy. The hot glue will actually keep them raised up like that. It looks like they're hanging on. I'm able to cover the bottom of the body there that's cut out. And now I'll move on to the snout. This looks amazing when it's all completed. I put the I cut it out like this. I slide my knife underneath, as you can see. I put the black 
Copic marker just touching underneath. It went right through the cardstock so that the snout was perfectly black. I put again some hot glue on my pokey tool, slid it up on the snout, and look at that. You've got three dimensional paws, you've got three dimensional snout, you've got the three dimensional bunny, also one time raised up moose. The leaves are tucked under, and uh, the snout. <laughs> It's so cute in person. It really is. Thank you, everybody. I mean, this card was a pleasure. Um, I really do struggle with masculine cards, but this was a joy. When you have another card that, card that inspires you off to the side, it's a lot of fun to do. So let's move on to the inside. This is going to be a simple... Uh, inside I'm just making right here I'm jumping in I want to make it look like it has a cast shadow like the Sun is coming in from the side there so you just want to take uh, I took a, Z, a C2 and a C3 and just made like a little shadow going there and this is my uh, favorite things dynamics I got it for ordering 60 um, dollars you get something free and this set was one of them I put the flag end on the bottom for added interest and now I'm going to show you how I set out to raise up the let just the letters three times so what you do is you take the first one the MFT dynamics you put double-sided tape on it and then you turn it over and you put it exactly where you want it on your card you don't have to put take out the little letter guts on this because the tape is clear so you'll be able to see straight through just take out the brown you know the upper portion of the A the two inners of the B and whatever and then I add some leaves on the bottom I grab my T square and I set that there to add this little sentiment I took the guts out as you can see of the letters there and here I took my knife and I was trying to take the glue out but then I realized, I don't know why I'm doing this, because really, even if there's glue in there, you can see straight through. So I didn't do it on the next one. I take my next die cut. I die cut four of them. One I put down and three I kept. So I want to do the uh, dark to light, the ombre. So I did that with uh, three different colored greens. And now I will poke out the little letter guts. I add the Nouveau. Now watch this. This is, you hardly have to press on this glue and you can get tiny, tiny bits of glue out just like this. Isn't that amazing? And put it around the letters. Then you're going to add the next one so that the letters only will stick to there. The scent, the actual piece won't but the letters will then the letters are ombre because you went across it with your Copic markers then um, on this one I realized I didn't want to use the knife it was making cut marks into my letters so I grabbed my styling tool and uh, with the smallest ball end I just uh, nicely take out the letters easier than doing it with the knife and uh, here I'm making sure that it's nice and straight I go again to the next uh, die cut. I put the glue on just like before. Look at, look how tiny. You don't need a little um, detailed uh, tip for that. It works wonderfully. Take your um, round ball tip there, the small end, and look at that. Uh, you can go all day stacking that up. And then because I couldn't see the ombre, I grabbed two of the markers just to make it look that way. And then I went, best day ever, true story. And it's like any outdoor story, right? We all have them. Uh, I love to hunt, so I have my hunting moose stories, deer stories, sitting up in a uh, tree stand, looking down at the beautiful nature scenes, you know, riding through country sceneries on my Harley, so many wonderful best days ever and a lot of wonderful true stories of beautiful nature and all that God has made us, these beautiful animals, 
just a joy to color in. I go up three times to raise the letters up and you really don't have to put the colors on uh, each of them but from the side you do like to see the green right and so I do that it only takes you a second place the other one on top grab your stylus and it will help support the letters as you pull it to one side or the other and um, this was kind of like I was reminded of uh, tree bark um, a log you know when on the best day ever and true stories I didn't uh, do the edges I just left it nice and plain I added one of the leaves I wanted to use up every little die cut that I had so it fit here wonderfully and it was the side that I did with the Copic uh, compressor with the air gun and I like that and then the little shrubbery couldn't sit there all by itself so um, I added another one to the left I added two more little Marvy punch out leaves one one way and one the opposite way one on the back here and what I'm looking for in this uh, Tim Holtz this is nothing but stickers I found this map so I, I lift it up and it gives me stability you know I like my cards thick I'll say it again and it gave me stability and then it hid all of that um, Copic that went through my 120 pound paper and there's no problem with that it's just that if the page uh, lifted up a bit you'd be able to see a map and it went right along with the theme of the great outdoors I'm adding a little bit of Nouveau right there just so it doesn't come up making sure my paw is um, raised up quite a bit there I wanted you to see that and then I took out one of these sticker butterflies put some Nouveau on it and found a place for it right there you only hold it for a little bit and it sticks tied in with the colors and then the letter C handmade by C and my blog on the bottom on the back I'm always reminded of my friend Sandy Parker and her site is crafting for almost everyone and she always puts a stamp on the back of her cards and this card where I was inspired by that Father's Day card it had a sticker on the back so why not right can you believe we're almost finished? <laughs> yeah, it's the best day ever for you, right? <laughs> Thank you everybody as always for taking the time to view my tutorials and for your lovely comments. I'm going to add this extra twig there. It looked kind of naked on that side. So I thought we would just extend that little bush and please enjoy the pictures. At the end, if you press on my face, you can subscribe to my channel. And thank you for the comments on my cake tutorial and on my doll tutorial, which has nothing to do with cards, but yet you did view them and left me some wonderful comments. Thanks very much. And this masculine card was a joy to make. Have yourself a blessed week, and I will see you on the next card tutorial, my friends. Take care. Mm -hmm.